presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day after the market close. Tom takes your phone calls from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time using the data available at that time. Let's go to John in Austin, Texas. Hey, John, what's going on? Hey, buddy. How you doing, man? I'm so good, I can't stand it. How about you? <laughs> good, man. God bless you. All of God's best to you and your family. Wow. You teach us how to make money. You are, are such a man of integrity and honesty. Right. I so admire what you do in your show, and you just deserve a whole lot of credit. And the other thing is you would be hard-pressed to invest in something that's going to bring you a better return than that gold report. It is fantastic, buddy. I just wow. so appreciate you having us make money. I, I appreciate it, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. Good day, money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the July 17th, terrific Thursday edition of the Closing Bell on the Tom O'Brien Show. I'm your guest host, Steve Rhodes, filling in for Tom. I'm the morning anchor here at TFN.com and author of Mastering Probability, the daily newsletter service that is the intelligence for creating financial freedom. I'll be filling in for Tom this afternoon, and I'd be grateful for a phone call from you. This is a call-in talk show. Our call number is 877-927-6648. My outcome during the next couple of hours is to teach you how to master the tools for trading. And that includes utilizing uh, things like A to B equals CD patterns. These, will, these are technical patterns that I'll share with you. We'll take a look at swing points, Gartley patterns. We'll certainly take a look at volume. We'll really get a feel for what uh, is going on in the uh, markets today. Uh, and uh, each of these signals are what I call tactical patterns. But tactical patterns alone, well, if you only use tactics, you'll get slaughtered. I'm going to teach you about strategy, and we're going to see some strategy today inside of the uh, markets because we got some reversal signals as patterns were completing exactly what it is that uh, you want to see when you are trading and investing. Now, we had the Dow finish off. 100 day and they closed down 162 points, trading out at uh, 16,976, closing out at 16,976. The S&P down 23 points, that's out at 1958. We had the uh, NASDAQ composite off 62 points at 4363. Russell 2000 off 17. NASDAQ 100 down 54 points. New York Stock Exchange off 127 points out there. You want to talk about market breadth to the downside? 1927 net declining issues. Volatility, as Tom likes to say, in spades. How about the VIX index out here? The VIX index up 33%. 33%. That is just today. Now, the thing is, that is not the largest uh, VIX index increase in one single day. Let me see if I can pull this up on my uh, chart here real quickly. VIX index, actually the highest day was 54%. Maybe we'll go back and take a look at that. February 27, 2007. August 8, 2011, up 50%. August 4, up about 35%. So we'll talk about what that means. Our call number again is 877-927-6648. Gold up by $19. Silver up by 41 pennies. What I want to start off with first is let's go take a look at the uh, Dow because, you know, obviously very unfortunate situation that uh, has occurred over in the uh, Ukraine with that Malaysian airliner being uh, shot down. You know, we'll get all the details, I'm sure. Oh, hopefully we get all the details over the next coming days. But we know what the uh, results were out there. And one could say that that certainly started the cascade in the uh, marketplace out there. But here's what's interesting. You know, for those of you that uh, listen in on my show, maybe Larry's show, you know that we utilize uh, some uh, celestial charting tools out here. One is called the uh, Bradley uh, model. In fact, if you take a look at uh, the chart that I've got up on my screen, it's the Dow. Now, what's interesting about the Dow, both yesterday and today, and really today, what it did, now we're at all-time highs. So this is really going to be interesting because what the Dow actually did, like if you and I, if we, were, if we decided that we were going to put together a textbook, and we were going to just focus that textbook on the three drive to a top pattern. This was the script that we would actually write. So we have the Dow at all time highs. And a three drive to a top pattern, the first drive out here, let me explain to you what that is. The first drive, that takes place on June 20th. The Dow makes a high out there at 16,978. And several days later, on July 3rd, so as we're just getting ready for the uh, fireworks out there, the Dow makes another high, 17,074. Now, the expansion between those two, the expansion, Fibonacci expansion, 1.414, not necessarily, it's, a, it's kind of a semi-common expansion out there. Then, 
If the uh, Dow, you know, it moves down into a, a low on July the uh, 10th, moves higher in through yesterday, in through today specifically. The high today is 17,155.56 out here. As it makes that high, the second expansion, the second or third, so the second expansion, which creates that third drive, drive one, June 20th. Drive two is July 3rd, making a higher high. Drive three taking place today. Now, these are not patterns that you want to force. These are patterns that you like to see have an equal period of time out there. And they are dead on the spot. When I was doing the morning show, we were taking a look at this pattern. I said, just because price is up here doesn't mean that the uh, this is this, that would be a tactic. Just because price is made a 1.272 expansion, that does not mean that this pattern is going to work. What you needed was a reversal signal. And what I said was we needed to see the Dow close below yesterday's open, 1706191. Well, it did that and more, closing out at 16,976. Now, of bearish or bullish patterns, this one here is a bearish pattern because it's three drive to a top at all-time highs out there. The only thing that could potentially be more bearish would be to create an island reversal pattern. Now, as I pull this back, hopefully you're watching us on Tiger TV. You're also going to see a blue squiggly line on my screen. That blue squiggly line is what's referred to as the Bradley model. Now, Donald Bradley, back in 1946, in fact, you can Google it. You can find the book. It's, a, it's not a large book out there. It's titled Stock Market Prediction. He used all the planetary alignments in order to be able to uh, map both negative and positive aspects to create this model. It's on my screen. Now, the Bradley turn date usually doesn't work right on the turn date. It's right around the turn date. But you can see here in the Bradley model, that turn date taking place today, yesterday. Well, we know it today because it was completing as a bearish pattern was forming. And now what this says here, if the Bradley model were to be right, and I'm not saying that's the case just yet. If the Bradley model were to be right, what this actually says is that the market will make some type of low in uh, December. Some type of low in December, maybe like around December 15th, December 16th. We'll always take this one step at a time, one day at a time. Is today the uh, sell-off? That's just the end. Is it an overblown thing out there? The answer to that question is uh, no. The, in fact, emphatically no. Do I expect to see a bounce in the marketplace? Well, I can tell you. That for the last several years, all you've really needed within 48 hours in order to get a bounce is a VIX index reading of greater than 10%. Well, we got that and some. Does that mean it bounces tomorrow? Maybe it bounces uh, Monday? I would expect a bounce. So I don't know that you need to, if you're not on the short train, like my clients, like my subscribers are. In fact, now is an excellent time for you to go test drive my newsletter service. And uh, the guys at TFNN, they thought in honor of me uh, filling in for Tom today, I did it on uh, Monday. They said, why don't we put up on the uh, website the opportunity for the uh, listeners to go get a free trial. See, normally I charge a deposit for my services because I know that if you don't pay for something you typically won't pay attention but uh, they've gone ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and offer you a free trial that means there's no charge to your credit card uh, at all you can utilize a service for the next uh, 30 days no charge you can uh, you can cancel a service on day 29 so the only real cost to you is just simply the cost of all the information that you're going to miss out on and all of the uh, good trades so do yourself a favor and go over and uh, go over to the home. and that only is going to last I believe through this uh, weekend so probably through Sunday sometime if we take a uh, look at uh, the uh, Q's, the QQQ, and this is where we're going to focus on right now. We had the uh, Q's finish out the trading session at 94.62. And if we take a look at the volume today, the Q's were down with volume of 41 million shares. That's after making a high on July 15th, uh, two trading sessions ago with 39 million. Yesterday, 22 million. Now, 22 million shares up at a 1.618 butterfly pattern. That's just a signature of the Q's actually making a top. Is this going to be a short-term top, a long-term top? I don't know. I just know that the if we take a look at the Bradley model, we take a look at a three-drive to a top pattern, uh, it is awfully eerie. Uh, if you got And we have the VIX trading above the 50-day exponential moving average. Now, today's volume was increased volume inside of the queues on the way down. But you see, the queues have this other pattern. The queues have this pattern of actually forming lows with high volume. Much like the uh, volume that took place on April 15th, we saw the Qs trade down with about 84 million shares. That's what we're going to really need to get going. So with the mere fact that the VIX had a, a one-day reading of, uh, what, 29% or uh, so, what was it, 32%, uh, up $3.54. In fact, let me go ahead and put up my VIX chart on the uh, screen out here. 
All that was really needed in order for the market to start moving to the downside was to get the VIX above the 50-day moving average. That was at a price point of $12.11 out there. Well, it finished out at 14.54. So when I take a look at the, uh, I take a look trying to put this together out here with regard to a market that could potentially bounce. I don't know that tomorrow is really it. Maybe it is a Monday, and what you want to be looking for is you want to be able to look for a bounce that you can uh, sell into, and that's what we're looking at as we speak here right now. Again, our call number is 877-927-6648. Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, which you can test drive right now. That offer's only going to be out there for the next couple of days. Uh, totally free. No charge to your credit card. Go over to the homepage of TFN.com. You'll see it on the uh, upper left-hand side. And we'll be right back, folks. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently. Recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN and you'll find the path of least resistance under trading newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary Perspectives contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. With the launch of Tiger TV. 
WTFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back to the Tom O'Brien Show, folks. I'm your guest host, Steve Rhodes, filling in for uh, Tom for the uh, day. We had the Dow finish off 161, S&P down uh, 23 points out here. Let's just start off by taking a look at the S&P 500. Let's take a look at uh, where it, what it has done thus far. It completed a 1 to 1.272A to B equals CD pattern. That was off of the April 11th low. That was our A point. Our B point out here was May 13th. Makes a uh, shallow retracement, about a 45% retracement on May the 15th. Goes ahead and makes a 1 to uh, 1.272A to B equals CD. Now we start taking a look at the uh, retracement areas. And what we're going to do is take a look at a retracement area. Right off of that same A point, right off of that same swing point, right back here from April the 11th. So if we go from that low up to the high that was put in, the high that was put in inside the S&P, that was on July 3rd. Now, just a normal retracement, and they uh, had the S&P close out at 1958. A normal retracement takes you back to 1879. So it's a uh, fairly decent uh, dip from here. If it doesn't hold that 1879, that's your point to 618 retracement level. That's just kind of a normal floor inside. And in fact, there would be nothing wrong with the pullback there. The problem becomes if you start to see volume accelerate. Now, if volume accelerates inside the S&P 500, you're likely to see a move come all the way back into that April 7th level, so back around 1,800. But the real key, the real clues for us, let's go take a look at the spies. I'll give you some number on the spies. Then I'll go take a look at where I think the real uh, key comes from for us to be paying attention to as to what the market will eventually want to do. Now, if we take a look at the spies, and that's going to be by looking at the Russell 2000, by the way, which we'll do by looking at both the uh, by both the IWM and the actual futures contract. If we take a look at the SPIs, volume today to the downside accelerated. We did volume of 139 million shares. That was after doing a high yesterday with 80 million shares. So we certainly have some acceleration in move to the downside. If we come back to that April, in this case here, the April 11th area of the SPI, we take a look at the retracement levels. We'll go from that low to the high that was actually put in. Well, let's put, take a look at the high from July the 3rd. That level, now first, the first level where price is going to pull back to or should pull back to 19180. That's your point three eight two retracement level. I suspect, based on other elements that uh, we've been looking at for quite some time, where this market has gotten really, really stretched, that there is a little bit more of a correction. Now, I believe that it's going to be a buyable bottom. By the way, even in, now, and that flies a little bit in the uh, in the uh, in the face of the Bradley model. It certainly flies in the face of that three drive to a top pattern. So, from my standpoint, I always like to just simply evaluate the chart each and every day because that's really what our our role is here. You see, the the the, the thing about technical analysis, the thing about the chart patterns that we take a look at that's if you want to is that the the charts are providing you with information all the time now look uh, definitely a terrible event that took place over in uh, in europe no question about it i mean it, as bad as it really gets look i can say that from personal experience not uh, because in my days I used to travel quite a bit. I had retail stores around the world. So on Delta Air Mile, Delta alone, I've flown two and a half million miles. And I haven't flown much in the last 10 years. I did pretty much all the flying that I really wanted to uh, do out there. So, you know, and, and many of you obviously have flown. Can, 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 can you possibly even imagine that? But here's the whole point. We've got plenty of clues. I even said it uh, during my show this morning. When you least expect it, expect it. Because there were all kinds of clues that the market wanted to make lower price. In the case of the SPY, the most likely outcome is that it pulls back to about the 187.80 level. That's your point six one eight retracement. Now, inside the IWM, let's switch over to the IWM here, and then we'll go take a look at the, uh, at the Russell 2000 futures contract. If we take a look at the IWM, the IWM had made a 100% move of a move. What do we mean by that? 
what price does, much like you do on your normal drive, is it, uh, it, it goes back to a, uh, to a major intersection, the swing point area. And all that a swing point is is where you see a, a substantial change in the direction of price. Well, in the case of the IWM, that took place here on the trading session of March the 4th. It had high volume, so it was, a, it was also a high volume high, which ended up being tested. That high volume high on the trading session of March 4th had 112 million shares. The high there was 120.58. It was tested on 65 million shares on lighter volume. So to a certain extent inside the IWM, it says that price really does not need to travel back up to the high to finish that up. You know, to go try and take it on again. But on a longer term basis, the actual price projection, not for the IWM, but the Russell 2000, is like 1350. And I still believe to this day that that is a likely move. However, first, what the IWM needs to do, because it's been trading in this consolidation, a consolidation is where you trade in between swing points. It's much like maybe driving back and forth to work the same way out there. Well, if you take a look at the swing point low that we're talking about inside the Russell 2000, that's February 5th. That's somewhere in the range of uh, 107.27. That's the low. The high of that swing point, 109.15. We already saw one test of it, little hammer candle that was formed here on May 15th. Why am I mentioning a hammer candle? Number one, it's a bullish reversal signal. Number two is because that low is really important. So what you want to write down on a pad of paper is the low of that May 15th level. And that is 107.44. I have a little expression here because a hammer candle is such a significant reversal pattern. And that is if you are long and you close below a hammer candle, you're just simply wrong. You're wrong with regard to its move. And if that gets taken out, then the next level down inside the IWM would take you all the way back to the October 9th, 2013 time frame. The Russell 2000 has been moving lower while the Dow has been moving higher. That, too, is a uh, diverging pattern out there because uh, that you've got 30 stocks inside of the Dow and inside the Russell 2000. Well, you've got... 2,000 stocks out there. So that has been pushing lower. If we take a look at the IWM today, it did volume of 61 million shares. And we just simply take a look at retracement levels off of the low, up to the high out here. And the IWM is one of the areas where we are short. We're short in three different spots inside my newsletter service, Mastering Probability, which you can test drive for free right now for the next 30 days. It kind of sliced right through the .618 level. That level is 12.61, 112.61. You closed at 112.48. Next level down is really the .786 area, 110.34. I think in putting all this together, because this is the weak indices, out here. So this is the weak ETF. In fact, we don't even need to go over and take a look at the Russell 2000 futures contract, but you'll want to, and that's why you want to turn into my show each morning, because we're going to always be taking a look. We always start off the show by taking a look at what's gone on since the overnight session. What are the futures telling us right here, right now? Inside the IWM, Really good chance that it goes to test that bottom. If it breaks through that area well, then uh, that's going to uh, that's going to suggest a little bit more pain with regard to that three drive to a top pattern that we saw inside of the uh, Dow. Let's go take a look at uh, gold. Gold responded. As did uh, silver, uh, you know, so uh, so-called, uh, uh, I guess, flight to safety out there. Uh, gold right now up about uh, 20 bucks, $19 and change. My take on gold hasn't really changed that much here. Gold still wants to make, in my opinion, a lower low. Today, it was up with uh, 50, looks like uh, 119,000 contracts. That's versus being down with uh, 208,000 contracts on July 14th. So in essence, uh, what gold is doing is actually making a uh, C point, a potential C point of a smaller A to B equals CD to the downside. So we had a nice little bounce in uh, gold. And at this stage, until the highs from the trading session of July 10th get taken out, that's at uh, 1346.80. My take on gold is that it actually wants lower price. And that's the same with high ho silver as well. We had the Dow finish off 161. S&P's down 23 points. Leading the charge of downside price line to the upside, Sherwood Williams. They were painting quite a bit. We'll be right back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. 
Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back.
back to the Tom O'Brien Show, folks. I'm your guest host, Steve Rhodes, filling in for Tom for this evening. Uh, Dow off 161, S&P down 23. I uh, mentioned uh, during the first segment, we had the VIX index up 32% today. And I mentioned that that is not the largest uh, one-day rate of change. You know, one of the cool things about uh, about trading today is all the technology that we have available to us. So I take uh, I take these statistics. I take a look at the uh, rate of change in one day inside the VIX index, whether it's uh, plus 10 percent or more, whether it's less than 10 percent or more, because they they have meaning. Just as closing above the 50-day exponential moving average inside the VIX has meaning out here. So as I mentioned. And I'll show you as an example. Uh, so statistically speaking, 70 to 80 percent of the time, and since the lows in uh, 2010, I think the August 2010 lows, uh, the statistics are like 80 percent or so. So let me just switch over to the 80 percent that you're going to see a bounce within 24 hours time period. Now, does it have to happen? No. Remember, it's a probability. That means there's 20 to 30 percent of the time it doesn't actually work out like this. But the single biggest uh, day that we saw a one-day rate of change inside the VIX index, that took place on February. 27 54 percent rate of change in that one day here we're looking at the s p 500 on february 27th by the way that went from a high of 1449 down to a low of 1389 take a look at what happened the next day you got a little bit of a bounce out there how about the very next session out here i'm just going to go to august 8 2011 august 8 2011 we saw a 50 percent uh, rate of change in one day let's just go take a look at that and then we'll go to uh, one of our callers on the line august the uh, here's August 8, 2011. Showing that that's this trading session right here. You had the S and P go from a high of 11.98 and change down to a low of 11.19. Take a look at that very next trading session. You had a, a nice. Uh, in fact, this thing here bounced all the way back to the highs of the uh, August 8 before it ended up. Uh, eventually, we had a little bit of churn there before it eventually made a lower low back on October 4, 2011. In the meantime, let's go to uh, Mike in Oakland, California. Looks like Mike might be short the uh, uh, the uh, uh, IWM via TWM. Is that, uh, is, that, is that correct, Mike? Steve, how are you? Very, very, very good. Thank you for asking. I'm a first-time caller. Um, and, you, and you're doing great. you got a great radio voice. Oh, do I? Thanks. You now bet. I'm starting to choke up. But listen, man, I love... I love when you talk about Japan because I have that passion as well. I love the food, the, the sake and everything. Oh, I love yes. going there. Yes, yes, yes. Where, what, what, part, what part of Japan do you like the best? Um, I've, I've been three different times. And okay. I think for the food, I think Osaka, Osaka was really great. a great experience for, for eating. Yeah, have you been have you been there in the winter time so that you can have the uh, fugu, the uh, the blowfish, the poisonous blowfish? I haven't had it there. I've had it in Korea. Okay, okay, yeah. That, you know, uh, Osaka. I used to have a, a store over at uh, the Universal Studios theme park there, uh -huh. and Osaka is a great place to go to. I, what I like most about Osaka was walking down the streets and the uh, vendors that were selling the uh, the barbecued eel that you yeah. could eat. The you know. eel, yeah, definitely. You know, Definitely. Good. Do you have a? Do you have a? Do you go? You haven't been there in a while, have you? No, I haven't been there for a while. I used to go three, four times a year, and that's why I made Hawaii kind of like a, a second home for a while. Because uh, from Florida to uh, Japan, that's a that's a good long trip. So uh, I thought it was nice to break it up in a, a ten hour flight and play golf for a few days, and then head on over to Japan. So, uh, but. Uh, yeah. You know that doesn't stop me from eating sushi and uh, and uh, drinking a bunch of cold sake out there. Now I know our listeners don't want to hear me talk about all the great cold sake, but I can give you a lot of great tips there. And they want to know what you're doing with TWM. So tell us what you're doing and how I can help you. No, you segued that nicely. Look, it's really not about the T TWM. Okay. This is also about your uh, your RMI yes. indicator. And ah. I just think that's I think that's wonderful, man. That is like one of the best tools I've learned in the past year or so. Oh, well, well, thank you for that. That's uh, that's very kind. And to make sure you give uh, Al in our uh, studio your, your number, and we'll make sure that there's a, uh, a $5 bill on the way to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I, I yes. have some questions with it, but I'll just direct this towards the TWM for now. Sure. But I'll probably call you again with other questions about it. Anytime. I'm looking at a monthly chart. That's going back in, into 2013? Yes. And you're using the RSI as on three, is that correct? I am using it on threes to give me signals, yes. Okay, so I'm looking and I see November and December 
we're at zero. Okay. And I'm looking that December has a high of 54.16 on the TWM, right? The month of the month of which month are you looking at? November. December of, 2013. December 2013. Yeah. The high out there, yes, is uh, 54.16. And since then, the RSI has only been steadily going up. It has been. It's up at the 29.89 level. So on a 14 what? on a 14 period. On a 14 period, I'm looking at a nine, but um. Uh, what you might call it? I would imagine the way I've been looking at the way I've been applying your RMI. Yes. It looks like it's funny because it's in, these are areas of resistance and support I hadn't noticed before on charts, but ah, the okay. RMI seems to bring them out. You know what I mean? It. Do, I do know what you mean. So it looks like the TW, TWM will hit that 54 or something like that, and that'll be like a tough resistance. But once it gets taken out. It looks like this market, could, the, the general market, could go way down, and you'd want to be in that TWM. I'm yeah. not in it now, but I'm just applying it to what you were talking about in the last segment using the IWM. So, so let's take. So, I'm I'm glad that you you're bringing this up. I'm mostly glad that you're taking a look at a, a monthly chart because if we want to understand what the market is doing overall, a monthly time frame is a great place for us to is a great place for us to to uh, understand what the larger trend is that's in place. And so, what I'm going to punch up on my screen here right now is the Russell 2000. And so, there's a number of different tools that we use to help us chart the waters. And the Russell 2000, what it did was for period of about 11 years traveled in a sideways consolidation and that sideways consolidation mike was uh, we'll say the lows were right around the uh, 325 level and the high happened to be the high back in 2011 the june 30th high was at 856 mm -hmm. so about a 500 point consolidation now here's what we also know about a consolidation move when you break the consolidation which the uh, russell 2000 did with conviction that conviction took place january 13th of uh, 2013 and the reason why i say conviction is because it was a wide-ranging bar on the uh, monthly chart and when it broke through that area, and it had tried breaking through it a couple different times. It tried back in February or March of 2012, couldn't break through it. It tried again in September 2012, but it finally gave way in January 2013. What that says to us is on a longer-term basis, what the uh, Russell 2000 should do, unless we find, unless, unless, unless it gives us some other message here, is it should make an eventual run to the 1350 area. So I think on a longer term basis that that's really what it wants to do before it totally uh, peters out. Um, you know, that doesn't mean I would go long and strong here right now, but that's, that's my take on a longer term chart for the Russell 2000. So I don't know if you, t if you factored that into, into the overall mix. And from a monthly basis, we really need to see how the uh, month uh, finishes out here before we get any kind of idea as to uh, what kind of a signal we might be getting. What I will say is that the month of uh, March, of, you know, it seems like always March inside the Russell 2000, the March of 2014, it created a little doji candle up here at the, uh, at the high. And the very next uh, trading session for April, it moved back down. But what's interesting about the Russell 2000, Mike, is that if you take a, a chart on a monthly basis yep. and you go back to the trading session of March of 2000 and you just simply take that high and you draw another line into the uh, 2007 highs, what's really interesting about that trend line is once price broke above that on the monthly chart, when things were moving down in February, What's interesting, and the Russell 2000 and the NASDAQ were the ones that led the market down, what stopped it in its tracks happened to be that trend line. And it was tested one other time in May at the uh, May lows out here, and that seemed to hold it. So I think the Russell 2000 is going to come down to that area again. If it breaks below that, I'll just have to take a look at other signals that might be out there. But at the moment... Even with today's pullback, even with that three drive to a top pattern, the Russell 2000 still looks like it wants to uh, move up into the uh, 1350 area. Now that doesn't have to be, you know, in the month of you know, the month of July. July and August, September could be horrible for all I know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have one last question for you, and then I'll get off the phone. I would love to hear more about how you developed the Rhodes Momentum Indicator. I will and give tell me you, twenty bucks, not five. 
Ah, okay. Well, I'll tell you how. I, <laughs> I'm I, I will tell you, sure, I'll, I will tell you how I developed it. I was developing a uh, a auto trading strategy based on my price relative strength divergent pattern, and that's a pattern that is uh, that works so well at being able to identify uh, market tops and bottoms. In fact, it it identified the uh, the the high in two thousand seven. It identified it in nineteen twenty eight. Nineteen twenty nine. I mean, what 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 was the story behind? I mean. Well, I tell you what, we're, we're going to go into a, a break here. If you'd like to hold on, I'll, I'll tell that story. Or you don't have to hold on; I can tell that story. Love to hear the story, and thank you. And I'll try to I'll try to give the uh, I'll try to give the male version of it, so it's short and sweet. Hey, thanks so much for calling, Mike. Have a great uh, day. Thank See you. You, you bet. <laughs> we'll be right back, folks. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls were replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. 
No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back to the Tom O'Brien Show, folks. Uh, I'm your guest host, Steve Rhodes, filling in for Tom for the evening. Dow off 161, uh, S&P down uh, 23 points out there. And uh, the, our last caller, Mike in uh, Oakland, uh, good call. He asked me a question. How did I develop the Rhodes Momentum Indicator? I'm going to give you, it was really one word. And, and in fact, you can utilize this. In fact, you may utilize this whole concept throughout life. You have to be a person that either can believe one of two things. When things happen, when things happen in your life, you either believe that things happen to you or you believe that things happen for you. And here's exactly what I mean. I had begun to uh, develop an automated trading strategy, identified a pattern out here called the uh, Price Relative Strength Divergent Pattern. And I developed this uh, a couple of years ago, taught it to uh, all of my uh, newsletter subscribers. I use it on the uh, air all the time to try to identify what the market is doing, where it's going to uh, bounce. And it's where price is moving lower and it's doing it on less relative weakness, or price is moving higher and it's doing it on less relative strength, just as Mike had mentioned. Now, what I wanted to do, because it was working on all time frames and all instruments, this happens to be the gold contract. Contract, by the way, it's the August uh, gold contract. As I was making a low out here, December 19th, it was making that specific a uh, bottom. Just like, uh, likewise, as it was making a high out here on July 10th, it was also making that same pattern. We got the uh, confirmation at the uh, top here on July 14th. So I said, I want to go ahead and automate this and create an automated trading strategy because the real work is in the mind. You know, you want to be able to create something so it's working on multiple interest instruments out there and just firing away at the trades because I had done all the back testing to know that it had a positive expectancy. Does that mean that all trades work? Absolutely not. You have to use proper money management. But does it work so that you produce a uh, so that you produce nice profits, a nice return? The answer is yes. And there was one element that was needed. It wasn't until we got so deep into the application when it was finally done, and there was one element that we had assumed that the system would uh, provide us with, which was reversal signals. And the reality was, that even though I had that software, the reality was it wasn't producing the... Uh, it wasn't producing the output that was needed. I hope to have that at some point in time here, but I've had my fingers crossed. And I was a pretty depressed person for about a total of five minutes. Because then I realized was this is not something that happened to me. This was something that happened for me. And that something that happened for me was also the ability to identify a different pattern out there. Something that all of a sudden I noticed when I went back and started really taking a look at. And I was trying to answer the same question that maybe many of you do, such as how is this market going up on light volume? And what I really wanted to understand was I really wanted to understand Oh, uh, I don't think I can. There we go. I, well, let me uh, let me get back here and change it. What I really wanted to understand was, was there a way for us to understand the EKG, the electrocardiogram of the uh, marketplace? Is there a way for us to understand on a, a long-term basis? Let me put the uh, monthly chart up here as an example for the uh, Dow Jones. This is the transportation index out here. And I use these little signals. Maybe you can't make them out. They're little red and green signals out here. And just like an EKG has a sine wave, you know where it goes up and down, up and down, in between a certain range out here. Well, so does the market. You see, the market is nothing more than a bunch of yous and me's, these living, breathing organisms out here. And they make these signals. I identify these signals, you know, because I'm the doctor, Dr. Rhodes out here. And I identify these signals, and they help us to understand the actual strength of the market. And it takes into account the momentum and a number of other factors out here. When you see these red little markings out here, they're telling you how strong the market is. Just take a look at the last leg up. 
inside of the uh, Dow Jones uh, transportation uh, indice. After it formed this one little green candle here, which was still in an uptrend, it actually gave you a buy signal back here in October of 2011. And ever since that time frame, the little EKG has given us nothing but these little red signals out there. Now, the month here is not over. We've got, uh, obviously, a, a move down inside the Dow Jones Industrials. I expect we're going to see a little bit of a scary low out here. But the reality is the trend is still in the uh, the, the trend is absolutely still to the upside out here. So I was able to go out there and identify a pattern that uh, took into account the volume aspect of what was going on, and that is called the Rhodes Momentum Trading System and Strategy what uh, Mike referred to as RMI. Now, the real beauty about that is each of my clients, my newsletter subscribers, here's what they get. What they get on a daily basis for every index, for every ETF, what they actually get out here, folks, is they can see exactly what the trend is on a monthly, on a weekly, on a daily. They also get that with regard to the futures contracts on intraday charts out there. So if you are a short-term trader and you want to understand what's going on inside a currency marketplace, then you can see exactly what the trend is on the 120, on the 60, and on the 30-minute uh, on the 30-minute uh, charts out there. So if you haven't had a chance yet, if you haven't done it yet, go over to the homepage at tfnn.com. You'll see over on the left-hand side what we call that little carousel area. You'll see my name. You can go ahead and sign up for the newsletter service. Uh, there's 30 hours worth of education. There's a 90-minute uh, workshop, money management workshop that's worth 149 bucks. And look, 29 days from now, if you decide that you don't want my services, that's not a problem. And you're not charged a uh, you're not charged a, a tick or a penny. All right. So hopefully that answers the question as to how I got there. Remember, things always happen for you, not to you. I know sometimes that's hard to get, but boy, if you get your head wrapped around that, you will be off to the race. Now, let's take a look at Priceline here. That was off to the races to the uh, downside. Priceline is attacking a, a swing point. The swing point here is from June the 16th. That's got 751,000 shares on that uh, trading session. And today, expanding volume, moving into it, 930,000 shares. If it takes out the low, Priceline takes out the low of 1183. That says it's going to go ahead and set up a 1 to 1. A to B equals C to the downside. It gives you a price projection here of about 1155 in that area. It may actually be setting up a, a little girtly buy pattern out here. We'll have to see what happens as price gets down there. But first, it's got to go ahead and take out that uh, swing point. Now, that price range there of 1167-ish or so, 1155, uh, you know, that might be, maybe it moves down to about 1132, but price line moving into a swing point with volume, excuse me, with volume on the way down. You talk about getting just totally smoked out here. That is what SanDisk was doing, down with massive volume. Volume was 29 million shares to the downside. When we took a look at it this morning, uh, during the first hour or so of trading, we saw, value, we saw volume was accelerating, but not like this. But the target area is that it's going to come back into this breakout session. But the breakout area has got uh, 12 million shares. That's back on April 17th. That's its target area, and that is on uh, SanDisk. It's probably headed down to about the $73 level, closed out at $93, down with massive volume. To the upside, though, a nice-looking stock chart here for Sherwin-Williams. That was up with volume. That was taken out swing points. That's at all-time highs out here, closed out at 210.95, and that looks extreme. That was taken out the uh, B point of a larger A to B equals CD. That was from the March uh, 7, 2014 level. That had 1.3 million shares. Today, on a down day in the market, taken out with 1.6 million shares. They are painting the town green tonight in Sherwin-Williams. Folks, my name is Steve Rhodes. I'm the lead anchor here in the morning at TFNN.com. You can always turn in, tune in to us at uh, TFNN.MOBR. You can watch my show live on your mobile device by going to the homepage of TFNN.com, clicking on those smartphones on the right-hand side, and you'll see my show streaming live. Have a great Thursday. I look forward to seeing you real soon. Take care, folks. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day after the market close. Tom takes your phone calls from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time using the data available at that time.
Let's go to Marty in Worcester. Hey, Marty, what's going on? Hi, Mr. O'Brien. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, man. How you been? Oh, can't really complain. First of all, I wanted to thank you for the bargain re-up on the goal report. I've been getting it for quite a while, and uh, for a couple years there, it was like an insurance policy. I'd say, oh, i got to buy goal, and the goal report would say, oh, no, not yet. And lately, it's like a winning lottery ticket. So uh, it's working really well all around. I appreciate the feedback, Marty. Thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. Good day, Money Masters and Treasure Hunters. Welcome to the July 17th, terrific Thursday edition of the Tom O'Brien Show. I'm your guest host, Steve Rhodes, filling in for Tom. I'm the uh, host of the uh, morning uh, shows, kicking things off for TFN.com from 9 to 11 o'clock. If I'm not on a radio station in your area, you can always catch those shows by putting on your mobile device, uh, TFN.MOBI. You can listen to the shows. And, of course, you can watch those shows live. We stream live through Tiger TV. Just go to the homepage of TFN.com. Um, upper right hand side you'll see a button three little smartphones on it you can click on that and uh, watch the uh, show live the archives of those shows are on channel 9 and channel 10 I'm also author of a, a newsletter service called Mastering Probability I consider that to be the newsletter service that is the intelligence for creating financial freedom hope everyone out there is having a great Thursday let's make sure we do everything we can to have a, a great Thursday evening in the markets here we had the Dow finish off uh, 161 points down 161 points trading out at 16,900 976 S and P down 23 points at 1958 and DX 100 that was off 54 points uh, led by Priceline to the downside Sandisk uh, was not helping matters out the Russell 2000 off 18 points uh, trading out at 1133. Uh, gold up 19 bucks, silver up 41 pennies. The uh, VIX index up a total of 32% in one day, up $3.54. As long as that VIX is above the 50-day exponential moving average, you can expect carnage in the uh, marketplace. Our call in number is 877-927-6648. Give me a call, folks. Happy to take a look at uh, your stock chart. Let's go take a look at each of the ETFs for you, since most of most of you, uh, you know, on your charting services, maybe you don't have access to the futures account. You should. But let's go take a look at the ETFs out here. Let's look at the start off by taking a look at the uh, QQQ ETF. It uh, was down uh, about uh, one and three tenths percent today, off a dollar twenty-seven. Let me put the uh, daily chart on my screen out here. Volume accelerated to the downside, but nothing substantial, and that's a, a positive for the bears out here because what the uh, Qs do, what the Qs typically do, what their characteristical pattern is, is to make lows with high volume. High volume such as a low that was made back here on April the 15th with 84 million shares. What do the Qs do today? The Qs did volume of 42 million shares. So nowhere near one of those viable uh, bottoms out here. Now what the Qs did not do today was the Qs did not break through their market profile low. That's at about $94.42 uh, out there. If you see the queues close below that tomorrow, that's an indication of a, a change in trend that is in place. We can also come back here and draw a trend line. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's take a look at a trend line off of that low back on April the 15th. We'll run that trend line right up against the uh, low uh, that, oops, I mean to do that, the low out here from uh, May the 7th, the low from uh, May the 9th, the low from uh, May 16th. That identifies a pretty good trend line out there. Let's also go take a look at some Fibonacci retracement levels. These are going to help us to guide us as to where price is going. If we see the trend line get broken inside of the queues, uh, then that says, okay, this little uptrend off of the April 15th level, that has broken to the downside. That will be uh, somewhat bearish, and that would suggest a move not just to the .382 retracement or the dead cat bounce at 91.33, but more likely move down to the .618 retracement level at 88.25. If the queues stop there and volume doesn't now expect a high volume low to be put in when the queues do it. And either that trading session, of course, you really want to understand candle signals in order to be able to put that uh, together. If you take a look at the cues here, kind of hidden, but uh, if you understood uh, if you understood candlestick charting, you would also know that that was a key reversal session on a high volume low out there. And that's when you want to start firing away on the cues. So watch for that as a, a signal. I, I would have to imagine the cues are likely headed for the 88.25, but we can only take things one moment at a time out there. I can't control what the market does, just what it is doing at the uh, moment. Let's go take a look at the IWM. The IWM finishing out at 112.48 out here. As it was uh, doing that, it was uh, moving with some accelerated volume to the downside. It's already made the 0.618 retracement. The IWM been traveling in a, a nice 
consolidation pattern that really, quite frankly, began back in uh, November, November uh, 7, 2013. Maybe it uh, started before that. Yeah, about November 7th of 2013, the IWM was sending out invitations saying, hey, we're going to go trade in a sideways consolidation. It's a nice sideways consolidation. And the IWM, it runs from the uh, lows of about 107 up to the highs of uh, 120, uh, 121 out there. So you've got, uh, what, about uh, 107, 121, about 14 point uh, move out here inside of the Russell 2000. That says whenever the Russell 2000 breaks either the upside or the downside of the consolidation, your expected measured move is going to be 14 points. We'll see what happens as the IWM gets down to that hammer candle on May 15th. To break that low, that says 14 points to the uh, downside. Let's go take a look at the spies. See what the spies did. They closed down two dollars and 25 cents, a little over one percent to the downside. As we take a look at the spies, volume today to the downside. Volume of 144 million shares after making high yesterday with 80 million uh, shares. If we take a look at uh, downtrends, let's go do that. Let's do the same kind of a uh, thing here. Let me get rid of. Uh, let me get rid of the uh, retracements that are in there because we can always draw those back. And if we take a look at a trend line here inside of the spies we'll take that off of the april i will take that off of the february 5th level let's do that we'll take the february 5th level that's going to run us into the april area and there is our trend line you can do that at home on your machine as well use the uh, low of april 15th as well as the low of february 15th if that trend gets broken that says okay we've got some lower price that says that the trend has changed now how far will price go i can't guarantee i can't I don't know that for sure what i do know is uh, that when we get a reversal signal We'll go long. When we get the uh, reversal signal, you go short, just like we're short inside the newsletter service. And by the way, my newsletter service, Mastering Probability, the guys at TFNN, they were kind enough to say, hey, Steve-O, let's do a little bit of a special for all the uh, listeners. Maybe they've got so many new listeners uh, because uh, we've got TFNN.com. We've got Tiger TV that's live inside eSignal 12's version of their software package. So that's a beautiful thing. All kinds of new listeners viewers of our shows out here. So let's do a special deal where they can sign up for your newsletter service. Yeah, they got to give a credit card, but it's not charged for uh, 31 days. And they can uh, cancel on day 29, and there's no charge whatsoever. So, folks, uh, all kinds of education. There's a money management workshop. That's worth 149 bucks. You get that for 30 days. That you want to take. If you've never taken that, that's really the trick to uh, understanding how to play this money game out there. So please do yourself a favor. You'll, if you go to the homepage at TFN.com, you'll see that little carousel over on the left-hand side. Uh, go ahead and give that a shot. Sign up for it. You won't regret it. I promise you that. Now, as we take a look at the spies, we're looking at a, a daily chart. Still relatively strong. They haven't busted through the old resistance line of its market profile, which is at 195.20. In order for the Dow to or the spies to really start to begin to change their change change their trend out here, not only do they have to bust through this little rising trend line, but they got to close below 193.46 out there. That should be some type of support. We'll see if in fact that level holds. So the spies still. Look Looking relatively strong, although uh, starting down with some uh, volume out here. Let's finish this off and take a look at the uh, diamonds. The diamonds today closing off a dollar forty-six, down about eight tenths percent. The diamonds are very strong out here. But let's do the same thing. Let's take a look at uh, trend lines. You'll want to do this on uh, your charting uh, package at home, just to try to understand the uh, trend. Let's go do that uh, together. Let's start with uh, the uh, lows out here, just like we did inside the. Uh, just like we did inside the SPY, let's use that February 5th low, and then let's run that right on in into, in this case here, let's go ahead and uh, use the uh, low out here inside the diamonds of May 20th. You could certainly go ahead and use the uh, April 11th low out here. I've just simply grabbed that May 20th low. Why? Because the last time that we saw price move down, which was on July the 10th, that happened to move down right into that uh, trend line. So just use a logical spot for uh, identifying trends. That says if the uh, diamonds, uh, let's say tomorrow, I'll give you a price target for tomorrow. Well, tomorrow they'd have to, to by breaking the trend, they would need to close below probably 168.42. Don't hold me to the penny, though, but somewhere below 168. Now, it breaks 167.40. That closes below its market profile. It hasn't done that on the way up other than a couple of short periods of time out there. But breaking this trend would be the thing that you would want to really pay attention to. If, in fact, that is the outcome, we see that change in trend taking place out there. And we certainly had a reversal signal today. You had a key reversal session inside of the diamonds. But worse than that, you had a three drive to a top pattern that confirmed inside of the Dow Jones. We'll take a look at that uh, pattern. But the retracement levels, the ideal, the 
lo the logical retracement levels inside the diamonds out here. 164.37, that's your .382 retracement. 160.07, your .618 retracement level. I expect that that is probably where she is headed to. That's back down to that April 11th low. So today we had the Dow finish off a total down, I should say, a total of 161 points. S&P down 23. NASDAQ composite down uh, 62 points. Expect a bounce tomorrow. Expect a bounce. Maybe it happens on Monday. It just may be an intercession bounce. But the move to the downside is very likely not over. Steve Rhodes, TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to his subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 50 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom? 
Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back to the Tom O'Brien Show, folks. I'm your guest host, Steve Rhodes, filling in for Tom. We had the Dow off 161, 161 points, and it culminated, uh, folks, with a uh, three-drive to a top pattern. Uh, it formed a key reversal session, bearish engulfing uh, candle out here. Three-drive to a top pattern is one of the more bearish patterns out here. And it also culminated at a, a time period that matched up with the uh, with Donald Bradley's work, the uh, Bradley indicator, which I've got on my screen out here. If uh, Donald Bradley... Back in 1946, his book titled Stock Market Predictions, you ought to get that. You ought to have that inside your library out there. Uh, and it just simply uses planetary alignments. It uh, gives you the, uh, it weights them with regard to a positive or negative impacts. If, in fact, the Bradley model is right out here, it says the market moves down and makes a bottom sometime in uh, December of 2014. And, folks, as we do at 20 past the hour each and every Thursday, we go to our man Basil Chapman. Now, Basil Chapman has a fabulous show each day. Uh, that is from 11 to 12, and he's got an extraordinary uh, newsletter service uh, called The Opening Call. And if you haven't had a chance to check that out, you can test drive his newsletter service as well. My friend Basil Chapman, how the heck are you today? Hi, Steve. How are you? I'm doing just great. Thanks so much for asking. So we had a three-drive to a top pattern taking place on a, a Bradley Turnish date, and I'll bet you we had something take place in the Chapman wave as well. We certainly did. Actually... It hasn't taken place yet, and I'll just quickly explain. In the Chapman Wave methodology, what we look for is the most obvious lowest low bar, and from that bar we count each successively higher peak, and we label them. We label it peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. When you get to D, very often, that's where you've got to be somewhat careful because at peak D, the fourth highest peak, that's where you can, you don't have to, but that's where you can get the longest and deepest correction. And what I said to my subscribers on my opening call over the past couple of days, I said, look at the pattern that's forming. We've been, been looking at this for some time. Very large cup formations and then smaller cup formations, all within the most beautiful intermediate term up channel. And what I demonstrated to my subscribers was, on the 9th of June at 16,970, the Dow pulled back in, in three quick steps and went to 16,703, held this green line support, turned around and went up and made a nominal new high on the 20th of June at 16,978. It then pulled back and what it did went down to 16,746, just about four days down, holds the green line beautifully, runs up, and in nine sessions, just like the previous one, goes to a nominal new high at 17,074 on the 3rd of July. And then what does it do? It takes four sessions to test, not the green line, but it goes deeper. It goes into the red line. And that red line says, if it doesn't hold support, that's real pro trouble. And at 16,805, it holds, and we get this rally. And what does it do today? And this is why we anticipate we already were short the S&P going into this morning. And what I said was, if the Dow at 12 o'clock, that's exactly as my show finishes, my, my Tiger Technician's Hour, Eastern Time, 11 o'clock till 12, I said, at 12 o'clock, if the Dow is down 50 points or more, we want to go short, and I'm going to explain what we did. Why? This is the ninth session on the 17th of July, 17,151, another nominal new high. And what happens? This is leg D. So we got everything that we wanted. There was an alternate wave, but in the meantime, D is what we wanted. And what I said is we will go short this incredible instrument. This has been on fire it is the VS inverse VIX short-term ETN. Mm -hmm. So we, we got short right at noon, and then there was a rally. And that rally was mystifying because the bulls are determined to keep buying every single dip, and the bears are just shrugging their, their shoulders and saying, oh, no, getting stopped out again. We better go long. And that was just typical of what happens on a day like this, a very quiet day that out of the blue this is, there was news about an airline um, crash which is terribly sad and then there were other other incidents and what happened was this xiv um vix short term and what it does is it's showing you 
the inverse of what happens with the volatility index went from our short at 44.90 down to 42.29. The biggest, this is the biggest red candle it's had in ages. This is the daily chart. Yes. And in my, in my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology, which is only available at TFNM, on, in chapter 22, there's a pattern I call jokingly the drop bucket. It actually is the double top formation. It explains exactly this pattern. You can see it right here. There's, there's a series of, of moves that goes to the upside. It hits a trend line. Then there's a cup formation, and there's a double top formation. Here's another one, and the double top formation turns around and reverses, and that's, that was exactly what we were expecting. So this, this is probably one of the most serious reversals we've had in quite some time. We've seen it in a number of stocks and, and in the Chapman Wave you can go to a peak F. That's the most dangerous of all. When you fail at the sixth highest peak that's the one that can give you a very sharp move. And look, here in the weekly chart, there's an alternate count, but if there's a close on Friday or early next week, the volatility, this inverse volatility index starts to trade under 40 one has to consider that there's this potential here for a peak F top so the, and leg E in the monthly. So this is the very first time that we're getting a whole series of time frames that are saying, hey, be a little careful here. We've had a spectacular move to the upside, but um, you know there's still some stocks. We have a stock, Ford, in, in our portfolio, which even today was doing well. It closed, finally closed down 11 cents, but it used another technique that I have, which is a cup formation but a very much bigger cup formation and, and a technique that I call the Chapman Wave Inside Wedge. I know you've got your Rose mo um, Momentum indicator, which has been fabulous for you. So this is one of the techniques I use, and I gave a left side, right side projection to 1802 sometime this week, and this was weeks ago, and today it went to 1808 and then came down. So yes, and, and, and what, you know what we want. What we want folks to to hear from us is uh, what the the great thing. One of the great things about TFNN.com is that we've got a number of different hosts, each utilizing different systems, different tools to help identify what the markets are doing. Oftentimes, uh, uh, clients or listeners might get uh, concerned because we might take a different view on the uh, market. But that's actually, I think, the benefit of what it is that we offer here at TFNN. Each of us providing our own systems out here. And Basil's just provided you with some systems and some tools that have shown a reversal. If we take a look at uh, Donald Bradley's work, the three drive to a top pattern, uh, that is coinciding with uh, Basil's work as well. You take a look at uh, the Bradley model out there. You take a look at the Rhodes Momentum indicators. You take a look at key reversal sessions. Pretty important message. Uh, you know, you can't just uh, all these patterns. And I think the point that you're really trying to make, uh, uh, Basil, is that these are leading type indicator patterns out here. You had projected that uh, your pattern, left side, right side, uh, time, price, time match, was going to uh, take place today, if I'm not mistaken. So, yes. folks, listen to the message that you're hearing from, uh, you know, from what the markets are communicating to us. And uh, something else, uh, Steve, that's really quite important is that the, uh, the volatility index, if you look at the VIX itself, let me just yes. uh, go down to the VIX, yeah. in the daily chart, um, the, there is a trend line in the weekly chart that I, I had drawn in a long time ago, and I've been talking about this for, for about uh, five, six, seven sessions uh, during my show. And I've been saying, just be very careful, because if the trend line, the down-channel trend line, I call it the inside track, is taken out this Friday, yes. that's going to mean a lot in terms of weakness to come. Perfect. Baz, always great to hear your voice. Have a, a great uh, evening, and I look forward to hearing your show tomorrow. Take care. Thank you very much, Steve. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks.
With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary Prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mob in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks, to the Tom O'Brien Show. I'm your guest host, Steve Rhodes, filling in for uh, Tom for the evening out here. We had the Dow finish off 161, S&P down 23, uh, NASDAQ composite off 62. So, uh, you know, a number of reversal patterns, a uh, number of island reversals in uh, individual stocks out there, a number, and, and these are stocks up at all-time highs uh, that you want to be paying attention to. We did, uh, Basil and I, we were talking, Basil was bringing up the uh, VIX index out there, up 32% uh, today. Now, uh, that is not the single biggest one-day rate of change, but it is well above the 10% level where you typically see a bounce in the marketplace out there. So your expectation, we're coming into a Friday here, light volume Friday, but the most bearish thing that could happen in the VIX index is uh, giving us an indication. Let's see, what was the trend index today? If I can uh, find that, I should have that down just here. Uh, only 1.32, so no, maybe it's not Maybe it's not uh, tomorrow that we see the bounce. Usually within a 48-hour time period, we see some kind of uh, bounce out here inside of the market, and it's a bounce that you uh, want to be taking a look at. So now, look, it all depends on your time frame that you are trading out here. So, uh, you know, Basil and I, we've been studying the uh, daily charts. Uh, tomorrow during my uh, show, you know, at 9 o'clock, I'll begin taking a look at uh, weekly charts uh, with each of you so we can see it just exactly what's going on inside of uh, uh, those candle sessions. Uh, let's take a look. We took a look at all the ETF structures for the uh, uh, for the index ETFs, just to make it easy for you. Now, so what were all the indications ahead of time that we would see some kind of significant reversal? Well, the first one here is the Euro-Japanese yen. Now, the Euro-Japanese yen is the currency pair that tracks our U.S. stock market better than any other currency pair that's out here. Uh, what this did yesterday was it broke through a, uh, a very strong level of support. That strong level of support was a trading session of June 12th. Now, what it also did was uh, by breaking through that level, it went ahead and violated a 0.786 Gartley buy pattern. This is a Gartley buy pattern that uh, effectuated, I mean, it, uh, it confirmed that that was a valid pattern. And the importance there is that when, uh, when 0.786 Gartley buy patterns fail, they turn into butterflies. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example from today. So let's just go take Stevie just doesn't come up with this stuff and pull it out of, you know, you know where. Uh, it's just the reality of, uh, of, of watching these patterns time and time and time again. If we take a look at what was going on this morning. And so when you woke up and you saw that futures were down this morning, if you were short, you were probably saying, you know, hooray, that was a wonderful thing. But if you had been paying attention to the uh, show, uh, uh, the uh, the Trader's Edge show, what I was uh, what I was communicating to you, what was going on at that uh, nine o'clock session, as in fact it was really at as I sent my newsletter out at eight o'clock this morning. I always try to get it out at eight o'clock. That way, it gives subscribers uh, an hour and a half to plan for their day out here. What was taking place at the time frame of seven o'clock this morning was the uh, was uh, the uh, S and P. Futures, the 30-minute time frame, was forming a uh, was forming a Gartley buy pattern. It was also, I believe, forming a, a trough G using a Basil Chapman. So here's where you can blend a couple different systems uh, together, and it was also moving down into uh, a very a very strong level of support. That once it breaks, it says if you're long the markets, it's the wrong uh, it's the wrong thing to do. That's if you're trading from a daily standpoint out here, not weekly or monthly. Uh, and so that level got broke. Now this was a 0.786 Gartley buy pattern. This worked. In fact, it achieved its. Third outcome. The third outcome was getting up to the 0.786 retracement level. In fact, it got right up, uh, well, got up to 1976. I think that was the high 1976 and then began to sell off. Now, here was a, here was a 0.786 Gartley buy pattern that worked. And now look, it's failed. And guess what it's turned into? Yes, it's turned into a, a butterfly. In fact, as we speak right now, it's probably about the 1.618. Uh, uh, no, so it's, already, it's not down to the 1.618 butterfly here just yet. Actually, let me do this. Let me uh, delete this. Uh, let me go find out exactly where that 1.618. So I'll give you a price projection of where price is likely to uh, head to. Uh, which is going to be about the 1946 level. Now, price doesn't have to stop there. It is certainly in the oversold uh, uh, level. Uh, but here is where a uh, here is where a uh, failed uh, Gartley buy pattern turns into a, a butterfly. So let me go ahead and paint that in for you so you can see what that picture uh, looks like. So right around 1946 may be the level where the ES Mini starts to uh, bounce. And maybe it starts that uh, bounce that we're expecting from the uh, from a one-day rate of change inside of the uh, VIX index. So look, if you come in tomorrow and the uh, futures are up, uh, don't uh, don't wash your hands and say, oh, that was just a, uh, you know, I don't know what they'll be saying on the news media. We're just really taking a look at the chart patterns that, that are out here.
Now, the signals that uh, were suggesting that we were going to see some type of market retracement, here's a, here's a correlation chart between General Electric and the uh, Dow. And if we take a look at that, you know, Basil had shown a, a trend line out here. I've got a similar trend line inside of the Dow. I don't usually use line charts out here, but I do when we take a look at these correlations. Now, GE happens to be the very upper portion of my chart out here. And GE has a very unique characteristic in that it leads the uh, Dow. It is, uh, doesn't really have much of a weighting structure inside the Dow. It's uh, you know number uh, 27 or so of uh, 30 out there. Probably ought to go figure out exactly which uh, number it is. But if you take a look at GE here, if you're looking at the top portion of my screen, you'll see some red lines going up or down versus what the Dow is doing. And it's GE that has always led the market and said when you're making lower lows or lower, I'm sorry, lower highs inside GE and the Dow is making higher highs, it's an indication that the market is going to correct. How far? You know, that's where we have to use other tools, A, B, C, D, down, uh, retracements, and so on and so forth. But if you take a look at GE and tomorrow, Tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, very important sessions here for the Dow and for General Electric. If you take a look at GE, it broke a small trend line. This is a similar trend line that it broke back in October of 2013. And it broke that trend on uh, as we came back to uh, after uh, celebrating New Year's Eve in January of, of this year here. And GE broke through that uh, trend. Now, it took 20 days, I believe, 20, 26 days for the Dow to actually break that trend. And when it did, that's when it made those lows back in uh, February out there. Right now, if we come off of those lows in February. We use our next touch points out here, the April 14th level. We're going to see that the Dow is sitting right now on that trend. Whereas, back here on the 25th of uh, June, 24th, 25th of June, GE broke through its version of that trend line. And all we've seen GE try to do here is try to get up and tag I get back inside the trend, and it has failed on two separate occasions out here. So you've seen a uh, you've seen a uh, uh, a uh, divergence here where GE has been saying it's time for some type of correction. Doesn't give us the idea as to how far, but the signals, as I say, uh, have been uh, present in the marketplace. If we take a look at the uh, Euro Japanese yen, here's a chart of the uh, Nasdaq. I usually show the S and P 500 or the ES Mini out there, and uh, if you take a look at the bottom portion of the screen, that's the Euro Japanese. Japanese yen. The top portion of my screen is the uh, Nasdaq uh, futures, and look at the, the, it's been doing a tango out here. Uh, you know, not tick for tick, but really darn close out here. Really correlated close. In fact, when the uh, markets were moving down into the February 5th level, uh, the Nasdaq was moving and making a bottom on February 5th. Guess what the uh, guess what the uh, Euro Japanese yen was doing? It was making a low down there as well. Now, what we've seen here is that Tango. They've uh, been doing a new dance step here because the Nasdaq is making higher highs and the Euro Japanese yen has been making lower lows. So it was a forecast of uh, what it is that we saw. Uh, you know, very very difficult situation. Uh, you know, in the world, uh, you know, it's a, it's 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 insane out there. This is not a political show, uh, you know. And I'm I, I've been fortunate enough to travel around the world. I've spent some time in Russia. In fact, opened up a retail store in the Peter and Paul Fortress out there right after Perestroika. And that whole thing was a, a trip. Beautiful, uh, beautiful country. People are beautiful out there. It's just some of those folks that are in charge. Anyways, I said we're going to keep this to uh, stock charting out here. Uh, let's take a look. So so what my expectation is, is that we see some kind of bounce over the next couple of days. Let's go take a look at some stocks here that we're moving. Let's, in fact, take a look at some things here in the uh, post market. We had some uh, equities uh, come out with uh, earnings. Uh, Google out with the numbers after the bell. They're trading up about 7 bucks right now. They closed out at 573 Last trade firing off at about five eighty, five hundred eighty dollars $580 out there. Uh, not really, uh, you know, where is it bouncing to? Look, uh, it's got some significant resistance at the 584 level out there. If it can get above 584, that would be bullish. It really needs to get above yesterday's high in order to continue that uh, bullish mode topside. IBM out with numbers as well. Uh, that is off about uh, three uh, three bucks right now. Uh, that closed out at 192.49. Last trade fired off at 189 out here. Now, in that case of IBM, this is, a, this is trouble. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, what did I say? It's trading at 189. Look, the low of today is 190.76. Let me go ahead and erase this pattern out here. Uh, there are a number of there are a number of stocks that could be forming these island reversal patterns. If tomorrow uh, IBM does gap down and never trades uh, uh, never trades up to the level of 190.76, you'll have a little island reversal pattern inside of IBM that could be setting up a very large A to B equals CD to the uh, downside. 
We'll take things one step at a time. It is trading off in the uh, pre-market. We've got uh, Seagate Technologies. STX is the ticker symbol. Uh, they closed at uh, 59.49. That was already off a dollar 82. Was moving down with some uh, volume. They had revenues of 3.3 billion versus 3.43 out there. No wonder if you take a look at uh, hard drives and how cheap those things are these days. I think I saw an ad for a uh, two terabyte drive for like 49 bucks out there. It's pretty tough to make it up on uh, volume, and that's what Seagate is. Uh, that's the message behind Seagate right now. Trading out at 59 dollars. I'm sorry, trading yeah, 59 dollars and uh, 15. A sense out there, so not off uh, too badly. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Hex powerful weekly newsletter, the Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. says you can't take it with you. 
TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back to the Tom O'Brien Show, folks. I'm your guest host, Steve Rhodes, filling in for Tom for this evening. Uh, don't forget, I uh, kick things off at TFNN each and every uh, day. In fact, if you are a user of the eSignal system, go ahead and upgrade to uh, upgrade to uh, version 12 out there. In fact, if you'd like to uh, test drive the uh, eSignal system, if you go sign up for it, normally they give you a 30-day uh, trial on it. Uh, you mentioned to them that uh, you heard it from uh, Steve Rhodes or TFNN, and uh, they will go ahead and give you a 60-day trial. So uh, go ahead and take advantage of that opportunity out there. And, and the reason is because Tiger TV is fed right into the uh, system out there. So you can be trading. You can be watching us uh, analyze some charts. You can be following along uh, on a, a great uh, trading uh, platform and charting platform out there. The Dow off 162 points, S&P down 23. Let's take a quick peek into some of the sectors out here, uh, some of the S&P 500 sectors, that is. Uh, the energy sector down one and six tenths percent. That was uh, percentage-wise the leader to the uh, downside here. Close out the session at 9870. So what was it doing at 9870? First, let's take a look at the volume today. You know, inside the S&P 5, we saw expanded volume inside the markets, but uh, nothing that was uh, huge. And uh, it's going to be the huge volume in the queues that will help us to identify when the uh, next uh, viable bottom is. I don't suspect that that is it right now. Now, what the XLE has not done here is not broken through a market profile level. That would really be about the 9838 range. I'd say 9805 out here. Uh, today, down with volume of 10 million shares, 10, almost 11 million shares. It did have a, a significant reversal pattern right here as it was making its high on June 23rd. It's a daily chart that we're looking at. That had 17 million shares to the uh, downside out here. Where is it that the energy sector is likely headed to on a, a break? You know, we'll just do this with uh, really each of the uh, of the tools, each of the instruments that you might be uh, trading out here. If we take a look at a, a trend line, we'll come off of the lows here February 5th. We'll run all the way up uh, into uh, where we're at right now, and we're using also as a, a trend line uh, anchor point the uh, March 20th, 2014 level. That also used the April 11, 2014. So you can see here, tomorrow, Monday, going to be an important trading session for the energy sector because if it breaks below that trend line, that'll be an indication that the uh, change in trend is underway. If we look for volume areas where we saw a little bit of a, a breakout inside the energy sector, that would say want to pull back maybe in that April 15th level level. That's where we had some volume, about 22 million shares. And if we do a quick retracement from the uh, low to the high, just to see where that might come in at, uh, see if we've got a couple of things that line up. The 0.618 retracement level is at 89.34. That April uh, 15th level, the low is 89.32. How do you like that? Pretty good chance that that is where the energy sector is headed to, but not until it breaks that uh, little rising trend that is in place. We look at the financial sector. Financial sector was down one and three tenths percent here. Let's go check out the volume. It too has not broken through a market profile. That low is a 22.49. You break through that. That's a suggestion of a, a change in trend. But let's come back here to the uh, let's come back to the uh, January time frame. I'm sorry, February 3rd as well, inside of the uh, inside of the XLF. Let's draw a, a trend tool from there. We'll come up. And so the uh, trend inside, well, I didn't mean to do that. Let me, oh, come on, come on, work, work with me here. 
There we go. Let me just pull that back a bit. In fact, uh, let's just do this. Let's come back into the, uh, now that I get a chance to do it, let's come back and make a, a longer trend-based tool. Let's come back into October 9th, 2013. Let's use that low, and then we'll use the uh, February low. Yeah, I, I think that is really the right trend to be using. So if you're going to do this on your home, at your on your on your system here, go ahead back to October 9th, 2013. Use that low of uh, 1948, and then go ahead and use the low here from February the 4th. That's going to connect you. It's going to connect the dots out here into April 11th low. That's the trend. Price-wise, where is that at? It's uh, you know probably in the $22 range inside of the XLF. Down today, volume behind the move, 34 million shares. Yesterday up with 29 and 21. So you know really not too, too shabby. Uh, last time was moving up. Uh, the trading session is moving into. That had 24 million shares to the upside out here. So it hasn't exactly cracked, but it'll crack if it uh, breaks that uh, trend line. And where will it head to? I'd have to say inside the XLF, very likely back to the February lows out here that's where you've got some pretty decent volume about 105 million shares uh 79 million shares back on april 11th so that would be the first resting point that's somewhere in the 21 dollar and 56 cent range on a continued move lower how about the technology sector the xlk uh, xlk down today trading out right now at uh, 39 38 dollars and 98 cents uh really uh, just broke the uh level of resistance old resistance should have been new support but in this case here we use the market profile of 38.57 very likely its target area let's go take a look at its trend out here as well let's go back to that same october area that we looked at inside uh, using the xlf we're going to use the low here from the trading session of October the uh, October the 9th, 2013. That's going to be where our trend uh, forms. We'll go ahead. We'll uh, touch that. Uh, there we go. We'll uh, touch that uh, level right here from uh, February 5th, 2014. And that's a strong trend. So if you see the technology sector, go ahead and break that. Price-wise, where's that at? Uh, good question. It's probably depends what day of the uh, week that it hits. If it were to be tomorrow, for example, it's probably about $37.00. And 52 cents out there. So the trend still, again, if you take a look at intermediate time frames, significant reversals, no question about it. When you get a three drive to a top pattern, uh, in fact, uh, you know, if you and I, if we were writing a book, I guarantee you, we would uh, we would take a picture of the uh, of the Dow. And then, of course, if you were uh, one that followed celestial type patterns out there, if you were following the Bradley Index date, well, guess what? The market went ahead and gave you a gift. You got a three drive to a top pattern. You got a key reversal session at all time highs. You have a bearish engulfing candle that took back the last two days. Textbook wise, it doesn't get any better than this. The question is going to be is the Dow going to go ahead and break its trend? And we could take a look at uh, trend lines. We could take a look at ultra short term trend lines. If we look at the one from February, let's just take a look at the February 5th low and uh, take that up here to the uh, lows here in, uh, in April. Where did price stop today? Guess where it stopped? right on that uh, trend line. I mean, right on that uh, trend line out here. So tomorrow's trading session, a very important one. Do not be fooled if the market is uh, bouncing uh, just simply because of that one-day rate of change inside of the uh, VIX index. Instead, what you ought to do is just simply tune in to uh, my show at 9 o'clock in the morning here at TFNN.com, TFNN.MOBI. And uh, look, folks, do yourself a favor. Uh, I don't run this offer very often, but the uh, good folks here at TFNN, you can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. It's going to come with a 90-minute workshop that you need on money management, 30 other hours of education if you'd like it. Great trading. We're short the market out here. We're short in three different areas. Now is a great time to uh, check out the uh, newsletter service. Uh, all the details on the homepage of TFNN.com. No charge to your credit card. So the cost, really, the only cost, folks, is the cost of not doing it. So go ahead and do it. Have a great Thursday. Thanks so much for uh, sticking around with me, and I look forward to seeing you soon.